What's up, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna create events to store our, our uh, webhook event data, but we're gonna learn a ton about enums. In some recent releases of Rails, there's new support for special enum things that you can build inside of Postgres. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So we're gonna generate a new model called event. Now that event is gonna have some data. We're gonna store that as JSON. That's gonna be the event com that's coming from some source, maybe like Stripe or Twitter or some other social platform that our creators are working with. Now we're also gonna have some processing errors and those will be stored as text but we might also store an enum value for the status of this event that we received. So the status might be start out in this pending state, and then as we kick off the processing, it'll go to processing and then eventually failed. Now we've talked about this status field in the past and used an integer value in the database, but now we're gonna use the, uh, the actual data type inside of Postgres for an enum. So we're gonna say status is going to be an enum. Now let's take a look at this migration because there's a couple changes that we need to make. By default, just setting the enum to the type of status doesn't work yet with Rails 7. It might work in the future, but we need, to, we need to do a couple more things here. So number one, we need to call this new method inside the migration called create enum. Now the type of enum that we're gonna create is a status, and we're also going to set the values for that status. So in this case, we might start off with uh, pending, then processing, then processed, then failed. Okay, so these are the different status types that we want for our enum. Now for our enum status here, what we can do is we can specify that rather than just being an integer, we want to use the enum type of status. We're gonna set the default to pending and we want to set null is false. Now we need a comma there and we should be good to go. Let's run this migration and see what it gives us. So we say rails db migrate. That will create this new enum. Notice this, create enum. It's not creating a table, it's creating a new enum with the name status and all these different possible values. There's another cool thing we can do. We can say rails db console and this will log us into our Postgres database. And we can say slash D to look at the list of all the different tables. We now see this events table. So we can say slash D for events. What does events look like? Well, now we see this status and the type is not integer. The type of the status column is status itself. That's interesting, right? So it's not an integer, it's not a JSON, or it's not a text, it's a status. Now there's another thing we can do inside of the Postgres, um, sort of like, I don't know, this Postgres CLI or whatever, is we can do slash D capital T plus, this shows us all of our actual internal types. So here we have the type is called status. Here's the different elements of that type. We have pending, processing, processed, and failed. Very cool stuff. So we're gonna say quit, all right, but that's not all we need to do. We need to open up our model and update it so that it has context about that status at the event object level. So we're gonna say enum status, and here we actually need to specify each of the different statuses. So we're gonna say pending is pending, uh, processing is processed is processed, failed is failed, and we wanna set the default to pending. Okay, now if we open up the Rails console, we can say e is event.create, and now we can see e.status is pending. We can also say e.pending question mark, and that tells us true. We can say e.processing. Is it processing? No, it's not processing. Now all of these methods that it adds at the top level by default are going to use the name of the and the values of the enum, but you can also say prefix true. Now before prefix used to have an underscore at the beginning of it, but um, that's changed now. We can say e equals event.last, e dot status processed or status pending. So now this prefix will add status underscore to the beginning of each of those fields. Now that can be handy if for some reason you had a status that was like um, I don't know, private or a status that was a method that would otherwise probably be on the instance of the event. So prefix, it also has suffix. So we can say suffix true. So exit, so we can say e is event.last, e dot um, pending status. So is the status pending? Or I mean, is it is it in a pending status? So you now have the ability to put 
the underscore status at the end or status underscore at the beginning, which is pretty nice. Another thing you'll find is that now we have event dot pending status as a scope that will give us all the different events that have the pending status. That's pretty neat. You can also say, give me all of the events that are in the processing status. Okay, that'll give us all of the events that are in the processing status. Again, this is using that status type inside of Postgres. Very, very cool stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually just remove the suffix. Now those scopes are pretty cool, but if for some reason you did not want those scopes, you could come over here and say scopes false. And now when we reload and say event.processing status, that is, not a, that is not going to be a method that's available on the event because we've disabled scopes for that specific status. All right, we've got, I'm gonna enable I'm gonna disable the suffix and uh, allow scopes, and we've got our status set up. Now in the next episode, I wanna go through and actually set up a webhook handler. We're gonna wire it up so that we receive events from Stripe, at least to start, and that'll help us get ready for our custom connect onboarding. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.